About 15 years ago, on the first day of my first job with the National Daily, I was assigned to write a short editorial. There had been a coup in Thailand and my editor wanted 400 words on it. I was no expert on the subject, but I knew a few hours of Googling would give me enough material to fill two slim columns. And how difficult could the writing be anyway? After all, haven't I just spent two years working on a master's degree, researching for hours every day, and writing thousands of words week after week? With that gung-ho spirit, I got to work and produced, after several hours of toiling, what I thought was a perfect edit. A mini encyclopedia of information, crammed into nifty sentences, garnished with a smattering of political jargon. In short, 400 words that screamed, look how smart I am. I printed it out and took it to my editor. He glanced through it quickly, then pulled out his red pen. By the time he was done, I could barely recognize whatever remained on that sheet as my own words. The sentences were much leaner now, but packed with so much more power. All the jargon had been chipped away or simplified until the message was clear, concise, and compelling. At the end of this exercise in dismemberment, my editor told me what he believed to be the secret to good writing, something I have not forgotten to this day. The secret to good writing, he said, is rewriting. But here's the thing. All of us write dozens of text messages, emails, and social media posts every day. Some of us can do it in our sleep. As a result, this continuous outpouring of words gives us a false belief that writing is easy. Amitabha Kumar, who is a writer and creative writing professor in America, wrote a fine book called Writing Badly is Easy. Let me show you how it's written. That's how the title looks. It's one of the best descriptions of the art of writing that I've ever come across. Writing is easy if you remember a few golden rules and apply them every time you put pen to paper or finger to keyboard. But if you don't pay attention, writing badly is also the easiest thing in the world. In fact, your writing can have the exact opposite effect of what you meant to achieve. Let me show you an example. In 1998, a professor in the UK applied for a £170,000 grant to research, in his own words, the cognitive measurement of consumer criteria for manufacture parameter values in biscuit texture. Can you guess what this means? No? Well, here's the plain English translation. He wanted to study how the texture of a biscuit affects the enjoyment of eating a biscuit. Reading his original research statement is like biting into a pebble, no? Rather than biting into a delicious and crunchy biscuit. Hi, I'm Shomak Ghoshal. I've spent most of my working life either writing or editing other people's writing every day. Articles, memos, notices, emails, books, social media posts, long form, short form, medium form, you name it and I've worked with it. But even after all these years, after writing and editing a few million words, I still find myself applying the key lessons I picked up on the job every time I'm faced with a blank page. In this Thrive Master, I want to share with you five tips that have served me well throughout my career and will make anything you write sparkle. Here are the five things I will talk you through. First, structure. Then tone, clarity, concision, and finally, accuracy. Keep these points in mind every time you sit down to write 
and you will be able to communicate with confidence, sound authentic and leave a strong impression on whoever is reading you. So let's get started.